Hello and welcome to the Canadian Forces College Wargaming training video. To date, your training is focused on the theory of wargaming in preparation for your own games. The aim of this video is to show you what to expect when you conduct your own wargame. Wargaming is an interactive simulation of military operations that is crucial to decision making. Integral to the Operational Planning Process, or OPP, it ties together the entire staff analysis and planning effort, resulting in critical command products and tools to assist in the upcoming operation. Wargaming can range from informal discussions around the map to the use of sophisticated computer modeling software. The wargaming in this video is at the operational level. It will be used as a planning tool and to assist in decision making. It also serves to evaluate and refine courses of actions, or COAs, using the COA comparison criteria approved by the commander. Through wargaming, we can determine critical information related to COA advantages and disadvantages, to decision points, decisive points, contingency plans, branches, and sequels. The first step in wargaming is to develop your plan. Time is a critical factor when it comes to wargaming. Seldom, if ever, is there sufficient time to fully wargame all combinations. You must therefore carefully plan your wargame in order to achieve the maximum benefit. There are many decisions to be made when developing your plan. So, step one, select which own and adversary core will be used during the wargaming. Step two, Decide which method to use to conduct war game, such as by phase, by selected decisive points, or by lines of operation. Step three, synchronize your own timeline with your adversaries. In this example, J5 and J2 will synchronize their own timeline with their adversaries. Here we see an example with own forces above the timeline and adversary forces below the timeline. Once your plan is complete, you can finish your preparations for the war game. Some of these activities may be accomplished concurrently to your planning. Preparation activities include room setup and gathering of tools, maps, and data. Here we have a representation of the composition of a GOPG, which includes red and blue teams and advisors. Core teams, red and blue, also develop synchronization matrices focusing on the key DPs and their associated desired effects. From there, they create a master synchronization matrix, which is the schedule that describes the structure and duration of each turn, including key dates. Here we see an example of the room set up for a war game. On the walls, or projected on the screen, we see the op design and timeline and various SMEs seated on the periphery. On the table, you see a chart of the operational area upon which forced dispositions are represented. We see the note taker, or scribe, maintain the record of the war game, and then the key players from blue and red forces seated across from each other. Also seated at the table, you see the facilitator and referee. At the beginning of a war game, the participants will need an orientation, so the chair or facilitator should set the stage for them. He should provide a brief introduction that describes the purpose for the war game. At the beginning of the first turn, he will describe the strategic and operational conditions, the op design, the commander's mission statement, and the commander's core comparison criteria. Here is an example of the facilitator's brief summary prior to the commencement of a turn. Why we're trying to do this today is we want to get, at the end of this, we have a few deliverables that we have to get. Number one is the decision support template, a high value target list, updates to our COAs, and most importantly, the comparison of our COAs via our COA comparison criteria. So just to refresh everybody's mind, and I'm going to talk about what each of them mean for a little bit, we decided that we're going to compare based on flexibility, simplicity, sustainability, early support to civilian efforts, surprise, influence, and risk. Risk, uh, you know, sensor gap is kind of the kind of things I'm looking at, collateral damage, impact to humanitarian efforts, 
confrontation risk. So am I going to have some kind of mission failure based on early confrontation before I can support it? So just keep these in the back of your mind. What you should have that I put out for the co-leads, for sure you should have a copy of this, as well as the uh, J2 and the J5, is a turn cycle diagram. And the part I care about on there is if you look underneath the action, reaction, counteraction piece, it's got a dance card of what I would like you to say. And to keep it short and concise, please start with your objective for that turn as the opener in one sentence or less. So for example, my objective, block the seaports to prevent you from going in. And then talk to me about how you're going to move your troops in there. For the uh, method we're going to use, we're going to go through a belt method based on timings of G-Day. We're going to go R, heavy COA, versus most dangerous for the red side. The follow-up to that will be, uh, let me make sure I'm not getting out of order, R heavy COA versus the most likely COA from the red side. After that, we'll get into R light COA versus most dangerous, R light COA versus most likely. To refresh how the turn cycle is going to work, it will be whoever has initiative, action, then a reaction, then a counteraction. At the end, we're going to have a data capture. That's when anybody around the table is welcome to point out, and as we talked about on Friday, to highlight, that's an assumption, that's a risk. Everybody can do that. I reserve the right to trump you or parlay it to the right if need be. I don't anticipate that happening. For each turn cycle, even though we're using time slices, to please highlight at the end of this cycle, so for example, our next turn is going to be G plus 30. At the end of this cycle, I expect to have DPs 6, 7, 8, whatever done. And just mention what they are. Try not to get too bogged down in it. And then the referee will uh, decide at the end of that, once you've stated your case, whether or not we achieve those. And that is used so that we can highlight, and Scotty, that's kind of a pimp for you, so we can highlight, for example, DP6, D9 needs to move to the right by a week because it's not going to happen in that time slice, or here's some risks to achieving our DPs. Each turn of a war game is prefaced by an explanation of the situation to start the cycle and followed by a cognition or results capturing phase. The situation at the start of the cycle needs to be described by the facilitator, the blue cell, the red cell, and the white cell, paying particular attention to forces in place or the forces having an impact within the theater of operations. Here we see an example of the intro to a turn. So when we stepped away to recage everybody's brain back up, we have full deployment in theater of blue forces, red forces have mobilized and staged with some incursions into the territory with the general overall plan to harass, degrade, deny, and slow us uh, getting in there, if I've encapsulated that yes. properly. For the opening up right now, the initiative is going to switch back to red now because we're in theater. So I will ask J2 first, big picture, and then go into your initial action for the COA lead. So any updates or changes from the J2 side of the house? No changes, but just to situate everybody. So what we have is we've sealed off the, the Zor NC. We have the Marine Battalion ready. There's an infantry uh, division set essentially in a blocking position just outside of uh, Capella. And we have the two divisions up to the north blocking the, uh, the routes. The side with the initiative goes first. To begin, they describe the objective or purpose of their forces at this time and tasks for major elements of their forces, such as combat activities, deployments, or movements. Participants will have the opportunity to ask questions or seek clarification. In the event of any controversial issues, the facilitator will call upon the referee to arbitrate or decide. The scribe will record the actions taken. Here we see Red, who has the advantage, describing their action. So I'll turn it over to the uh, the COA lead on his next for his next move. Thank you, sir. So uh, as far as our stages, uh, we're at uh, phase two uh, at the end of our phase two, and uh, the uh, the reason for that is that we are cognizant of the fact that after thirty days, sustainability becomes a problem for us. So we continue to consolidate whatever gains we have made here. The airborne division which did not officially deploy uh, in the G to G plus five because we were scared of your air power capabilities. That airborne division has now been deployed into the Batari homelands from north to south Alan. to reinforce the Bataris and their claim for a Batari homeland. Uh, this, uh, as far as the overall picture from uh, the leadership point of view, uh, we've been successful on three of our four loos. Uh, the economic side, where we basically control the pipeline and the oil resources in the Zoran Sea. The destabilization side, 
where the Rugen government has basically lost control of the whole um, west, uh, correction, eastern portion <coughs> of Aruga and the mountainous areas, and the Batari nationalism side and the BLA home side, uh, BLA homeland quest. What uh, the Lu uh, that we have not been successful on is dissuading the international community for entering Aruga. Therefore, uh, in order to mitigate our sustainability problem, the VRG division is starting to fall back, defensive, blocking a strategic uh, retreat, if you will, of holding and blocking and consolidating the gains of the, air, of the uh, area, or sorry, of uh, the um, falling back towards the Capella area to consolidate this area itself and leaving this area as well. This division continues to hold here in the north on the uh, Perseus border to protect those mountainous BLA uh, regions. The uh, northern uh, divisions have not been redeployed due to our realistic uh, problems with the Republic of Draco as well, so they're unavailable to us. <coughs> and uh, what we're looking for really is to consolidate, continue to uh, conduct IO, PSYOPs, and that, uh, that um, convincing of the BLA that we're the best option for, their, for them in this area. Uh, we're trying to work with the international community to allow humanitarian, uh, humanitarian aid into that area to help the IDPs, to mitigate any of those issues, and to set ourselves up for uh, that post 30 days where we know that you will have superiority and uh, start to work towards negotiating favorable terms uh, for peace where we will have more control over the economic resources uh, and the Batari homeland. Next, the opposing side carries out their reaction, describing all actions taken or intended for that segment of the COA, including those independent of and those in direct response to the opponent's actions. Again, participants will be offered the opportunity to ask questions or seek clarification. In the event of any controversial issues, the facilitator will call upon the referee to arbitrate or decide. The scribe will record the actions taken. Here we see the COA lead describing their reaction to the red actions. This is followed by a period of clarification during which the facilitator and referee clarify any questions they may have in order to conduct an assessment. The blue reaction is uh, in order to continue on that we have, uh, our assumption is that we've achieved phase one, decision points one to 10, and that we're now into phase two, decision point one and two on the deter defend line of operation. So with that, we have in uh, Capella, or at this point, prior to the deployment of uh, any more forces, we have 25,000 or 23,000 and change forces in the, in the JOA. 40% of those are already in Aruga and Perseus. We're now bringing in another 55,000, which will bring us up to 85% of our forces. And we have the long list going from uh, a, a CIMIC group, MP group, NBC battalion, a rocket uh, launching battalion, uh, cavalry division, all going into Capella with some others. In Yofa, we have the remaining of our core, or some more of our core level assets going in. <coughs> there, in Mirpak, we have NBC and Simic going in, which is somewhere under that sticky there. And then in Perseus, we have also, uh, or in Perseus and Riga, we have a Mountain Battalion, an Armored Recce Battalion, Move Control, Mechanized Brigade, MLRS Brigade, all going in at that point. So at this point, at the, uh, the uh, timeline match to the lines of operation and decision points, is at the end of 30 days, we intend on having phase two DPs one and two on the deter and defend line of operation complete. Okay, and what about on your other loos for humanitarian assistance and stabilization? Well, if we are unopposed and there isn't any sort of kinetic operations going on, we at this point could also be achieving DP DPs one and two for stabilize and one and two from humanitarian assistance, which is, uh, Command and control with the whole of government in Aruga is established. Government institutions and economic infrastructure, which includes pipelines, oil civics, and everything else, is defended. And humanitarian assistance. We have the landlines of communication for humanitarian assistance secured, and the IDP camps are supported. Next, the side with initiative carries out their counteraction, addressing not only his own moves made earlier, but also those actions taken in direct response to the opponent's reaction. Again, Participants will be offered the opportunity to ask questions or seek clarification. In the event of any controversial issues, 
The facilitator will call upon the referee to arbitrate or decide. The scribe will record the actions taken. I would say that if, if that was the case, um, and we were at the point, um, so G plus five, sir, is that Still what you're G plus five, end yeah. state G plus five. So at G plus five, we would not have tried to, uh, to do those airborne jumps here because you guys probably would have had air superiority in, the, in that area. Not and plus, plus, the, plus the strategic deterrent. Um, we would probably have maintained our deployment of the Zoran Sea Fleet. Not the Marine battalions attacking, but the Zoran Sea Fleet is, uh, in our opinion, more powerful than anything else in the region. It's impossible for you to get naval assets in there. We would definitely deploy up to the peninsula to choke mm -hmm. off the eastern side of what we would consider Volpecian national territory, and we would definitely establish sea control of the oil fields in all of the uh, Zoran Sea. The uh, three uh, divisions which had planned to, uh, to relieve the initial assault would now have deployed up to the border. The 9th Infantry Division, which uh, was going to go into Capella afterwards, and thank you. The two VRG Armor Divisions, which were to relieve the Air Mobile at the border choke points, would all be on the border and waiting to see uh, what the uh, reaction would be at that point. The purpose of the cognition phase is to record any information captured thus far by the scribe or facilitator, decisions taken by the referee, and to identify any conclusions that can be made about the COA being wargamed. Cognition phase, so uh, if we can go through around the table any assumptions that uh, we either have not already solidified that people had jumping out in their minds. I'll start with blue side. Assumptions that we haven't already discussed or risks that you see at this point for G plus five. I'll just quickly summarize the uh, my deductions here for the co comparison. Go ahead. Okay, so flexibility, CGTF has none. At this point, uh, sustainability, uh, uh, Perseus is still available for uh, for landing, although granted uh, there is a threat in the, in the sea. Um, early support civilian uh, effort, uh, huge risk there if the BLA amps up their activity. Uh, influence, uh, uh, air superiority is uh, required from the SDF and uh, risk there are uh, no forces, uh, no, no combat power available to us at this time but the uh, APODs are still reasonably active at this point and there's potential to get people out. Okay, from red side. Uh, one of the things that I think Blue may need to look at is would there be a trigger where you would have to look at pulling those teams out if there was increased threat or risk? Yes. That might just be something that uh, needs to be looked at from the uh, from the red side. Um, nothing from my perspective. Uh, no, just uh, to try and uh, add some realism to your risk assessment um, about the unopposed landings. Uh, as I stated, probably wouldn't go kinetic. From my experience, uh, what happens is that the two fleets meet and there's negotiations. And those negotiations, uh, obviously, are you trying to get in and us trying to keep you out. Uh, and in reality, uh, without uh, engaging you in conflict, we'd be trying to hold you out as long as it would take for these forces to, to be able to get some ground. That could take 24 hours, 48 hours, just for you to negotiate your way through without going kinetic, without either of us you know, raising our voices. And I would also say that uh, we need to look at to see what the Arugans can provide, and perhaps they can provide a, a brigade on the eastern side of Capella. To, to assist with that block, to give you time to, to get in. So that might be something that we need to bring forward to the Arugan government. And I think That's the important it. takeaway um, is that your phase one may take a lot longer than the time belts which we've allowed. Um, just because of how long it take for the fleet to get through my fleet and for these guys to move through here. Um, not saying it's undoable or no, unrealistic, I concur. but the timeline will be much uh, longer. Upon conclusion of the war game, the facilitator will summarize the results. We may address points such as advantages and disadvantages, deficiencies to be corrected, additional force or capability requirements, synchronization requirements, significant risks and opportunities, decision points and supporting commander's critical information requirements, or branch plan requirements. Here, we see an example of such a summary. 
So the three big takeaways for this one, I would say that our biggest points to go back and look at. Uh, number one, time. Throughout all time slices we looked at, that's a factor, right? If they get the jump on us, they being the red side, huge factor. Second biggest factor I see is BLA. If they switch against you, significant issue for your plans. If they switch neutral, potentially an issue for your plans. If they stay on their side, significant issue for our plans. And last but not least, the air superiority piece. Uh, that's not just because I'm a fighter dude, but if we can't move our troops where we need to move them, we're going to take losses. And that may turn the tide against us from the uh, home support piece. So those would be the three big takeaways I have. Obviously, the other ones have been captured. As you've seen, when properly planned, prepared, and conducted, Wargaming can provide the GOPG and commander with valuable insight into the strengths and weaknesses of any given co-op. Hopefully this video will help you to better prepare for your next war game. Good luck with your future war games.